Lab Guy here. So you have a shoebox full, or face it, a room full, of old analog television sets and no off-air signals to view on them now that the world has switched to digital television broadcasting. How hard is it to create a simple source that generates a standard definition analog TV channel we can receive on our old TV sets? You can buy commercially made video RF adapters cheaply and easily, but where's the fun in that? Almost all old VTRs and VCRs have an RF modulator unit that is easily pulled out and repurposed. An RF adapter is essentially a small nanopower television transmitter. It puts out a signal that is barely stronger than the signal from a rooftop antenna, but that's okay. At this power level, you will not get into trouble with the FCC, and that's got to be a good thing, right? Old stereo audio VCRs may even contain units with stereo MTS capability. That is, to play stereo audio on TVs capable of receiving it. The unit I have today is monophonic, as are most of the TVs I'm likely to use it with. Since I was recently restoring the JVC PV4800U portable VTR, and I don't use RF interconnections anyway, I pulled the JVC KR200U RF adapter out. It just plugs into a socket on the bottom of the VTR. This unit is for American TV channels 5 and 6. Other units may operate on channels 3 and 4. I soldered some wires directly to the edge connector fingers for my interface. The transmitting antenna is a 6 inch long piece of solid bus wire. This RF unit requires 9 volts DC to operate. Some RF units may operate on 12 volts or possibly a lower voltage. If you are pulling the unit from an old VCR, power it up and measure the voltage directly with your multimeter. Next I added two adapters to allow coupling video and audio to the unit. In my case I used BNC to banana plug adapters as these are compatible with both of my signal generators. For video, I used the Leader LCG400 NTSC pattern generator. For the audio, I used my Wavetech Model 188 audio signal generator. You may use any AV source available. It doesn't matter if it is a TV camera, a VCR, DVD, Raspberry Pi, or any other source of standard definition analog video and audio. On the KR200RF unit, pins 1 and 6 are common ground. Plus 9 volts is applied to pin number 5. This powers up the converter. Video input is on pin number 3 and ground. Audio input goes into pin number 2 and ground. In both cases, the signal level is approximately 1 volt peak to peak. I set the video generator to produce NTSC SEMPTY color bars and set my audio generator to output 1 kHz sine wave tone at 1 volt peak to peak. Next, I turned on my test television and placed its antenna very close to the RF unit's antenna and tuned to channel 5. Lo and behold, it works. Humorously, the range of this contraption is about 2 inches. Marconi would not be impressed, and David Sarnoff would have claimed there was no money to be made here. This transmit range is fine for go, no-go testing of any old analog TV, however. If you cable the output directly to the antenna terminals of several sets, it would work too. So that's all there is to it. Another very simple project anyone should be able to bang out in an hour or two. Have fun with hobby electronics. It's an excellent pastime that leaves you smarter than when you started. Until next time, Lab Guy out.